Hello students, welcome again. Students, in today's lecture, we want to discuss the contribution of the precursors of Romanticism. Means we are going to discuss the pre-Romantic poets. We know about Wordsworth, Coleridge, Shelley, Keats and all. Okay, but before them, you know, there were some people who ignited, who, uh, who ignited this fire of Romanticism. You know, Romanticism in English literature begins at the end of the 18th century. To be precise, it was the publication of lyrical ballads by William Wordsworth and Coleridge, you know, in 1798 that we find the actual beginning of the period of Romanticism. Okay. But this was actually ignited by some other poets who were writing poetry during the 18th century. Okay, during this 18th century, this period is generally known as a dull and drab and colorless period of prose literature. No doubt there were some poets, but they were classical poets. Okay, and that's why the whole 18th century is known as the period of neoclassicism. Okay, but in this period of neoclassicism, there were some poets like James Thompson, Collins and, uh, and others, you know, they went against the wind. The wind was blowing faster. That was the wind of classicism and neoclassicism. But there were some poets who reacted, who revolted against that common trend of classicism. They wanted to establish a new trend of Romanticism, which we actually see in the works of Wordsworth, Coleridge, Keats and Shelley. Okay. So, who were these poets? There were six poets in number, but one among them, James Thompson, was the most important poet who ignited, who gives a spark of Romanticism in the period of Neoclassicism. Okay, if you, if you see this date 1700 to 1748, which is this period, this is this period is actually the period of neoclassicism. It is the period of Alexander Pope. Now, Alexander Pope was also a poet, but he was a neoclassical poet. The, uh, during that time, poetry was mainly artificial. Okay, poetry was written on the subject matter of urban life and uh, all such things you see. It is at this time that James Thompson comes with the publication of The Seasons. Remember this title, The Seasons, which was published in 1730. This particular work of art. It is a collection of poems, okay, which rings the death knell of neoclassicism, okay. It ignites the flame of romanticism. It is the first English uh, poetical work which speaks about the beauty and diversity of nature, okay. We remember Wordsworth as a poet of nature, but then the beginning was done by James Thompson too much early, quite early when even Wordsworth was not born. Okay, he presided even the sensuousness and spiritual love of nature which we find in John Keats and William Wordsworth. So you can say that had there been no James Thompson, there would have perhaps been no John Keats and William Wordsworth. Another important precursor of Romantic Revival is William Collins. Now mark this date, 1721 he was born and 1759 he died. Again, this poet is also writing poetry in the period of neoclassicism. Uh, William Collins is known for his Persian Ecologies published in 1742 and several odds 
published in 1747. Okay, his poetry is mainly known for high imaginative quality which you find in Astrid Coleridge also. He also has presented the, the idea of going back to past, okay, anti-intellectualism is presented in his poetry. Now, this was against a reaction, again, a reaction against neoclassicism, okay. Neoclassical poetry is intellectual by nature, romantic poetry is emotional by nature, okay. Uh, William Collins reacted against this intellectualism. And he has presented some legendary stories uh, which we find in John Cates and Coleridge later on in the period of Romantic Revival. The third important precursor of Romanticism is Thomas Gray. Again, this man, this poet, again lived during this neoclassical age, okay. Uh, most important of his contribution is elegy written in a country churchyard which is reached both in the humanitarian appeal and natural images. The tone of humanitarianism, okay, the relationship between man and man and the relationship between man and nature has been presented in a subjective manner, okay, and subjectivity is one of the most important qualities or features of romantic revival. So, that you find in Thomas Gray. Uh, another fourth important precursor or pre-romantic poet was Robert Burns. Who does not know Robert, Robert Burns? Robert Burns has been remembered as one of the greatest poets of the 18th century. His poems chiefly in the Scottish dialects are full of lyricism and his love for nature is presented there in this poem. He is a pre-romantic poet. Why? Because you find, you know, uh, the elements of nature, valuation of emotions and feelings, okay, spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. This you actually feel in Robert Burns' poetry, okay. His spirit of individualism, his spirit of freedom, uh, which we see in his poetry, all these things, you know, combine together to make Robert Burns a pre-romantic poet. Uh, fifth important pre-romantic poet is William Blake. William Blake is also known as an essayist, but he has written poems also. Blake's uh, poems, Songs of Innocence and Songs of Experience, published in 1789 first and then it was revised and published in 1794. They, these poems express his love for the simplicity of life which we actually see in William Wordsworth's poems. Okay, So, Wordsworth learned actually so many things from William Blake. Okay, These poems of William Blake are full of melody, music and the element of lyricism is also found there. Moreover, William Blake has supported the French revolutionaries. He has supported the downtrodden and exploited people uh, in his poetry, which also speaks about his spirit of freedom or independence. The last important uh, precursor of Romantic Revival is William Cowper. Okay, Cowper also lived during this 18th century of neoclassicism, his important contribution is The Task, which is a collection of poems published in 1785. Dr. Stopford Brooke has said nice things about William Cowper. He said that Cowper is the first of the poets who loves nature entirely for his own sake. So, he has also written uh, nature poems, so poems on the topic of nature. He wrote some poems expressing his love for nature and religion. So, the spiritual aspect of nature has been presented by him which we find in Wordsworth later on during the period of Romantic Revival. So, this is how these six poets are known as the most important precursors <coughs> of Romantic Revival or pre precursors of Romanticism. You know, this sentence is very worth noticing here. Even the dark darkest night will end and the sun will rise. 
un, uh, undoubtedly the night of uh, classicism or neoclassicism ends in 1798 with the publication of lyrical ballads and the new sun of romanticism uh, rises in English literature in the hands of Wordsworth, Coleridge, Keats, Shelley and others. So I hope uh, this is helpful to you uh, for your examination purpose. If you really liked to watch this video, please share this video among your friends and classmates. Thank you for watching. Thank you.